Welcome back to Crossfire. Our guest is the new chairman, recently named chairman, of the John Birch Society, Congressman Larry McDonald, the Democrat from Georgia. Uh, Mr. McDonald, your, your predecessor believed that the PTA was too left-wing and that uh, and the John Birch Society at one time tried to infiltrate it, as, or so he said. He used the word infiltrate. Are <laughs> uh, you still, is that part of your program now? Well, I think when the PTA comes out in this program for the test ban treaty and when the PTA comes out for gun control and comes out for obviously national legislative programs that have been linked with liberaldom, uh, having nothing to do with education of our children, I think many people are wondering what in the world is the PTA doing, and that includes members of the John Birch Society. Well, I well wonder about you. Uh, I wonder about you. I looked you up. You're, you're, you're the biggest joiner that I've ever seen in the world. You belong, as I counted them, to 67 organizations among which are the National Rifle Association, the American Pistol and Revolver Association, the Committee for the Right to Keep and Bear Arms, the Second Amendment, Found Amendment Foundation, and the Citizens Committee for the Right to Keep and Bear Arms. Well, Tom, I think there's a real drive in this country to try to destroy the realization of our citizens that they have a fundamental constitutional right to keep and bear arms as the Constitution allows. And unfortunately, there are those in our society, including elements of the PTA nationally, not always locally by any stretch, but nationally, who would uh, believe that the federal government uh, should restrict the right of citizens to keep in bear arms. Can I get back to that? What kind of grades the... do you give Ronald Reagan as president? And what kind yeah. of grades is the John Birch Society giving? Well, I would say in his speeches, uh, Pat, you'd have to give him close to an A, B plus to an A. But in his performance, uh, What's somewhere... What's most disappointing? Well, I think the fact that the rhetoric is going one way and the record is going another. Let What's me ask the issue? you about uh, the, this conspiracy again. Well, you can take the issue of, of uh, the, one of the major problems of this country is inflation right. and the problems of the destruction of the dollar. And the fact of the matter is, in spite of promises of the contrary, uh, Reagan uh, has not moved to correct the deficiencies. We're now back to Keynesian well, do you think economics that's, despite uh, comments to the contrary. Do you think that's a p result of the conspiracy you mentioned? Is there somebody working on them to get the inflation so that so that this country will be weakened. Well, as a man who campaigned against elitism, as a man who in his campaign rhetoric said that he would not be having the Council on Foreign Relations trilateral types dominating his cabinet, he's got about 250 members of such in his administration. Well, let me ask you about Bill Casey. Now, I've known Bill. members. I've known well, of the of the trilateral well, committee. I've known Bill CFR Casey in since, the administration. I've known Bill Casey, the director of CIA, since World War II. As a matter of fact, in World War II, he was my boss. Now, you you. Your uh, public relations director, the John Birch Society, says that Bill Casey is a part of this conspiracy well, that's trying it, to Bill bring Casey, about world before, government. Before he became CIA, one of his big jobs was aiding in the transfer of technology and uh, goods and so forth to the Soviet Union, uh, helping the Camera River Project, the Export-Import Bank. Oh, helping to finance is these the things. Export Import Bank part of the conspiracy. I think the, the I'm whole to drive the the that the, the fact that the American people have been tapped steadily especially since World War II, to finance their enemies and to have the massive technology transfer to those uh, who well, agree with you. You know that from the Braden Doctrine in the, in the agency, uh, which uh, you're very familiar with, and the feeling that uh, we must somehow subsidize the, quote, non-communist left. Uh, that's among our so-called allies. Braden was and in country after country, left? that turned out to be the communists, mm -hmm. the crypto-communists masquerading yeah, as non-communists. Yeah, that's Mr. Mitterrand, who was taking the strongest position against the Russians of any Western European Well, leader. he was about to lose everything at the polls, and he had to show some sign. Uh, it's very difficult to say exactly how far that will Congressman be. Congressman McDonald, he's yeah. been using the term conspiracy. No, I didn't use it. No, For no, heaven's no. sakes, Pat. The John oh, Birch Society used it. I don't want to go through the tapes. <laughs> well, it is. Don't blame it on me. He <laughs> used it. You've used it 45 times. That's right. They say this is a conspiracy. Right. I want to know what the conspiracy well, is. Tom. I'm trying to find out who's in it and what agencies of government in it, because I want to fight it along with you. You look and like great, Tom. Let me tell you, Tom. <laughs> you, you, you tell me, uh, you know, how can I join the John Birch Society? Well, gosh, Tom, you got no problem at all. All you need to do is write a letter to the John Birch Society, Belmont, Massachusetts, 02178, and yeah. tell them that you would like to purchase for $2 a copy of the Blue Book. Tom, you read it, and I think if you're a dedicated American, you will agree with every word, then you get in touch with me, and we may even sign you up. Yeah, but it says here in one of your, pub uh, one of your publications, not just anyone can be a Bircher. Now, well, how I can I be a Bircher? not just anyone. 
Now, if you don't believe in the Constitution and limited government and free enterprise and biblical values of morality, I believe in all those, but I don't. Qualify. I don't well, believe there's a conspiracy. He'd make a lousy well, candidate. Well, Tom, a lousy you know, candidate. As, as a matter Pat of fact, a member of the conspiracy, he's a member of the press. <laughs> let me ask you. He's used now. Mr. Braden's used for the 47th time the term conspiracy. Now, let me ask you seriously. When you use people like Casey, who is on the Council on Foreign Relations, David Rockefeller's Trilateral Committee uh, Commission, what do you mean, or do you mean? Is that your term, the term conspiracy? Well, there are many different levels of the problem. But yes, the term has been used, the term of conspiracy. When you have a group of people... They, I mean, they're actively, to... actively collaborating, and at the other end of that point of collaboration are communists, and on this end of the point of collaboration is Bill Casey and trilateralists and, and CFR uh, guys. Hey. You have people who are part of the elitist structure of this country that have dominated this country openly for 40 years. I know, but they're not... Is that a conspiracy? Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. If people quietly working together for evil objectives, two or more, that by definition is a conspiracy. You have by their own admission, you look at the tragedy and hope by Professor Carol Quigley, who's a member of this elitist group. He says, sure, we've been working this. Sure, we've been collaborating with communism. Yes, we're working for a global accommodation. Yes, we're working for world government. The only thing I object to is that we have kept it a secret. And I think we've gone so far along, we should come out and say, I'll bet you a dollar and a half that Bill Casey doesn't know who Professor Quigley is. I don't. He's at well, Georgetown a number of years uh, ago. He, he, he died a couple of years ago, and he wrote The Tragedy and Hope. He's a very noted member of, the, of your club, Tom. Tom, you've uh, got to broaden your reading a that's little right. bit. Really well, I, what I ought to do is read more about conspiracies, and that's why I'm interested in what Well, I'll tell you what, what you ought to do is go back and look at your founder, Edward Mandel House, because he wrote the book Philip Drew Administrator. And Colonel in this, House. Colonel House said that what he envisioned for the world was a world government along socialist lines as envisioned by Karl Marx. Now, that's, mm -hmm. that's your leader. Uh -huh. Tom, so you got to go back to the beginning. Well, his leader was Woodrow party. Wilson. Do you think he was a communist? No, I think or? Woodrow Wilson uh, was his follower. Uh, I think Edward Mandel House dominated Wilson, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Edward Mandel House, uh, that was, uh, we ought to make that clear, he was Colonel President House. Wilson's uh, principal Alter, alter advisor. ego, that's correct. Yeah. Uh, so he is, the, he is the real villain from which all no, these no, conspiracies... Uh, no, 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 no. He is a defend. major figure. Um, but there is, has been, unfortunately, in the West, uh, an element. Uh, there are good members in the Council on Foreign Relations, dedicated patriotic people. You've had Sproul Brayton, who was a member of the Council of the Birch Society. Bill Buckley's And Council on Foreign Relations. You've got some dedicated people. But the driving forces have very clearly been willing to collaborate, subsidize, work for technology transfer for what they feel is some type of an accommodation and merger. And I, I submit this would be a disaster for the American Republic. Are there any Our in guest, Congress? Sure. Our guest has been Congressman Larry McDonald of the John Birch Society. He's the new chairman. He succeeded uh, Robert Welsh, who has stepped down, as I understand it. Is that correct? Uh, he's been sort of promoted to chairman emeritus. He's been emeritus. promoted chairman emeritus and founder. And Tom Brady and I will be back with final comments in a moment. Pat, I... I just want to tell you, I think some of the people who served in the Nixon White House are good, clean, upstanding, patriotic, Amer patriotic Americans. And some of them, on the other hand, are, are suspect. And I, I'm just going to have Larry McDonald, the head of the Virtue Society, take a look at some of those people. And I wonder if he might find you. Tom, where I disagree... There's something with, going on here. I disagree with Congressman McDonald is the idea of conspiracy with you and your friends. I think it's more of a herding instinct. The direction you've been moving in, inertia, right. carries you further and further. But I do think this. That slogan, get the U.S. out of the U.N. and the U.N. out of the U.S. looks better and better every day, doesn't it? Maybe they were ahead of their time on that one. No, Pat, I think we've got to have uh, communications with the world, and the U.N. makes me mad, too. But uh, I don't think it's a part of the great conspiracy which extends from Bill Casey and Al Haig all the way to communism. Well, I think that uh, Larry McDonald's a patriot. I think he's wrong about the conspiracy, but he's probably less wrong about what he says about this country than the guy I'm talking to. Yeah, I think... Well, there you have it, America. Something really thought-provoking to chew on. I'd like to send out special thanks to Vote Your Conscience, who first turned me on to this video. Please, think very seriously about what we do over the next few months and who we put into office this year. Our futures may depend on it. Thanks for listening, and thanks for watching.